Our bodies are truly wonderful creations, yet they can also be the source of some really unpleasant smells, noises, and other things. Many of you can attest to the fact that if you want to get rest, stay away from the hospital. A friend of mine told me of his experience while he was hospitalized. Several times every night between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m., someone would come in to his room and wake him up. First, he would be taken down for x-rays. He'd be wheeled back to his room, would just be get back to sleep, and then someone would come in to wake him. And after he settled down again, someone would come in and wake him up and draw blood. Hmm. This went on for 17 days. He finally had a good night's sleep when he went home. I'm sure there was a reason for all this poking and prodding and weighing and picture taking in the early morning hours. I'm sure it was because the doctors wanted to get an accurate picture of his condition while he was uh, resting so that they would be able to come in in the morning and make their rounds and do what was necessary. Still, my friend joked with the nurses, actually I'm not so sure he was joking, that they had to find stuff for the night shift to do, so they went around thinking up ways to keep the patients awake and keep the staff busy. My friend told me there was this one nurse on the night shift that he came to dread. She was a lovely young woman, very skilled, very kind, and always gentle with him. The problem was that she was of a particular heritage where the people prepared their meals with a combination of spices. He also learned that these particular spices gave a person incredibly bad breath. Mm. He smelled her breath the moment she walked in the door to his room. It was really awful. There's a traveling exhibit that before our current public health situation would travel around the country to children's museums and museums of science. The exhibit is titled Grossology, the Impolite Science of the Human Body. This exhibit allows children to climb through a giant nose to discover how the body defends itself against airborne pathogens. The children can take a trip through the intestines to see how bacteria breaks down food complete with sound effects. They can play a giant old school operation game to identify parts of the body. I've seen the website for this exhibit and it leaves very little to the imagination. It does get the point across about how, about the less than pleasant functions of the human body. Our bodies, as wonderful a creation as they are, can sometimes do things that can be quite unpleasant. I've been thinking about our bodies for a while in the context of 1 Corinthians 12. The Apostle Paul is speaking about the body here, the body of Christ. One of the things that we have learned is that sometimes the body of Christ can be difficult, to say the least. Like our human bodies, the church can be less than pleasant sometimes. We do not always live in harmony. We do not always love each other very well. We don't always care for each other. We argue, fuss, and fight with each other. We are sometimes arrogant, thinking that we are somehow better than someone else. Maybe we think, because we have a leadership position in the church, that we are more important. Maybe we think that because we put a large financial gift in the offering plate, we are somehow more deserving of respect. Maybe we think because we're always here to wash dishes or teach Sunday school or make cookies for the holly fair or help out mowing the lawn that they ought to pay more attention to us. They ought to pay more attention to me. Being the body can sometimes be pretty gross. One ancient Greek historian compared the human body to a polis or commonwealth. His point was that there are parts of the body which are given less honor than other parts, for example, the stomach. He was making a political analogy to say that those members of the body that are less honorable shouldn't object to being ruled over by the parts that are more important. Paul takes that analogy and turns it on its ear. 
He says that the body has many members, yet we are all one in Christ Jesus. He then goes on to give some practical teaching about the proper functioning of this body because being part of Christ means something. This was teaching that was certainly necessary because the Church of Corinth was a church bathed in controversy and conflict. People in that church just had trouble getting along. Depending on what they are specifically referring to, I have to laugh at people who say that they want to get back to the New Testament church. I hope that they're not talking about the Corinthian church because it certainly was not a healthy habit. Not sure how they looked or how they smelled, but we sure know that they did like to fight with each other. So Paul addressed the proper and healthy, healthy functioning of the body of Christ. He did it by talking about three Ds, design, diversity, and display. Did you ever think about the design of the church? Back in 1965, Simon and Garfunkel recorded the song, I Am A Rock. As the last line of all four stanzas, they sing, I am a rock, I am an island. For another perspective, I would remind you of the 16th century poet John Donne, who wrote, No man is an island entire of itself. Paul writes, our body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells, but no matter how many parts you can name, you're still one body. It's exactly the same with Christ. God's design for the body was of one of interdependence. The reality of life in the church is that we exist for each other and cannot be completely healthy without each other. God has made us for each other. The church's DNA is what makes us the same. We were all created by the same heavenly parent. The blueprints of our, for each of our lives were drafted by the same master designer. And we are designed so that we are fundamentally the same. At the same time that we are all designed fundamentally the same, there is a great diversity in the parts. The same DNA that has made us, the same has also given us this diversity. God has designed some of us to be eyes, some to be ears, some to be feet, some to be hands, and so forth. That is the great diversity in the body. Think about it. If, we're all, if we were all eyes, how would we hear the Word of God being preached? If we were all ears, how would we see the verses of our hymns? If we were all hands, how would we walk forward to receive the Eucharist? If we were all feet, how would we embrace a hurting brother or sister? Can you imagine if everyone in the church were a preacher? We've had quite a few preachers here at Good Shepherd the last few weeks. But seriously, if everyone was a preacher, who would hear the word? Can you imagine if everyone was a teacher? Who would be students? If everyone was a student, who would be a missionary? If everyone were off on a mission project, who would take care of the needs of the local church? And if we were all tied to the local church, who would take the message of Christ to the world? In junior high school, I was one of those kids that went through a real growth spurt, and it happened rather rapidly. It made me feel quite self-conscious. I really wish that I had grown at the same rate as my classmates. But it was in my DNA. We can't choose our DNA any more than we can choose our spiritual gifts. A spiritual gift is just that, a gift. God has given each of us different gifts to use in the building up of that body. According to the law, those who bake cookies for the coffee hour, when we can do that again, are just as important as those who sing in the choir, who are just as important as those who work under the church to wire our video system, who are just as important as those who teach Sunday school, who are just as important as those who mow the grass, who are just as important as those who crochet prayer shawls, who are just as important as those who usher, who are just as important as those who prepare the altar for the Eucharist, 
who are just as important as those who do hands-on ministry among those in need. The diversity of the body is what makes us strong. We all have different gifts, and pooling all of those gifts together is what makes us complete and whole. We've talked about design and diversity. Now let me just spend a bit of time talking about the display of the body of Christ. Most churches, and Good Shepherd is no exception, need to find ways to lift up the contributions of everybody. I read a story about Harry Connick Jr., one of our great jazz musicians. Earlier in his career, during his concerts, he would have the whole band leave the stage, at which time he would sit down with all the instruments and play a solo. Piano, saxophone, trumpet, trombone, guitar, string bass, even the drums. Today, if you go to a Harry Connick Jr. concert, there will come a point in the show when he will turn the spotlight on each of his band members in turn and give them the opportunity for their own solos. Harry is still the best musician on the stage, but he is the one who is doing all the cheering for the rest of the band. The church has to find a way to make sure that the talents of all members of the body are utilized, appreciated, and celebrated. Most churches that I know have a long way to go with that. Sometimes our human bodies don't always work the way they're supposed to work. Snoring, bad breath, acid reflux, along with other assorted noises and aromas are less than pleasant. In that way, they are just like the body of Christ, because we aren't always pleasing to be around either. But Paul lifts us up, lifts up for us the beauty of the design, diversity, and display of the body of Christ when everything is functioning properly. Who we are individually will determine what we become collectively. Today is the annual meeting of our parish. <clears throat> For a second year, we will gather in a unique format, not the one that most of us would prefer. We will hear how the body of Christ engaged in ministry during the last year, and we will make decisions that will determine how the body of Christ will go forward into the future. The church cannot survive, flourish, and grow without the entire body functioning individually and collectively as was intended by God. When we fully become what we were designed to be, it is indeed a wonderful example of God's intentions. I pray that it may be so each and every day in 2022 and for many, many years to come. <laughs>